Would you pray with me? Listen to the one whose word is spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice behind creation. Listen even if you can't understand. Let us listen now to the voice behind creation. I moved here about 14 years ago this month to become a pastor. And when I did, I sat down and met individually with each member of our session at the time, our church board. And one session member I'll never forget, in an effort, effort to orient me to my new surroundings, shared with me the following story. Just a moment. story he told me. On Monday morning in New York City, passengers schlepped their way slowly onto the subway cars, grumbling throughout. On Monday morning here, on the other hand, many passengers marched their way onto the metro cars, their caffeinated purpose surging as they go. Here in ground zero for political power in our country, if not the world, ours is such a purpose-driven environment where God is for many a distant deistic creator. Especially for us Protestants who have drawn a post-Eden contract with the divine. You be over here, God, and we'll take it from here. Thank you very much. We do promise to tune in on Sunday at 11 when we can to confess and to profess that the rest leave it all up to us. Purpose driven. And so many of us I know are trained, highly trained to know what our purpose should probably be. We have too much at stake to believe otherwise. And we will work hard to fit into that narrative anything we can to accommodate and strengthen the knowledge of that highly trained purpose. I may have shared this story before. If so, I think it deserves sharing again. If you pardon me, I want to take off the stole. Because when you're preaching on a roller, and this gets caught up at times in the uh, knee scooter, I'm just going to put it right here for now. I have shared this story perhaps before. If not, I'll share it again. This has to do with how we can use purpose to cover up anything. I grew up in the South, as you know, and legend has it in the South that during the Civil War, there was a celebrated Calvinist clergyman of the South and chief of staff to Stonewall Jackson. His name was a Reverend Robert Louis Dabney. He was a strict Calvinist, and he was counseling the troops to buck up in battle. He'd preach, after all, boys, God has predestined what will happen to you, so do not be afraid. Do your duty. Now, once caught in the midst of a skirmish, the good Reverend Abbey jumped behind a tree, and the troops were mocking him. You've counseled us to buck up in battle because, because God has predestined what will happen. And now look what you do when danger appears. Reverend Dabney shook his head. He says, boys, you don't understand. That tree was predestined to be there. And I was predestined to jump behind it. Reverend Dabney demonstrates well the hubris, the arrogance or arrogation of pride. The controlling thinking of purpose-driven predestinarians, their faith. God has for each of us a purpose. Each of us is to discover that predestined purpose. And when we do or think we do, we can justify and rationalize and legitimize just about anything to fit what we think that purpose should be. That tree was predestined to be there. 
He was predestined to jump behind it. Who needs humility with such self-righteous purpose? Yet, as Blaise Pascal once wrote, people never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it from religious conviction. God, save us from such purpose-driven conviction to be right rather than to be joyous, to be righteous rather than to be joyful. God saves us from our purpose-driven compulsion to make things come out good or else. While God beckons us today to discover in the creation story what is good. The innate goodness of all created things first. First and foremost. Not to do good first. Not to be good first, but first see good. God's given intent of good, repeated at the end of the first five days of creation, God saw that it was good. And then God, when it got to human beings in day six, what did he say? God created human beings, not becomings, but human beings, as it said, and it was very good. How much more that, how much more important that declared goodness is and has been and forevermore shall be. What do we sing in holy, 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 who wert and art and evermore shall be? It wouldn't be Trinity Sunday with that hymn, right? Without that hymn. But that's what creation is about. Purpose that is given while we are busy being driven. And who among us isn't at least tempted to find some anxious solace by seeking out a divine purpose when tragedy happens? You know the examples, right? 911, 16 shot dead in our country over Memorial Day weekend. Now, I know most of us do not ascribe divine purpose to any tragedy. What kind of God would allow such things? But we are tempted to do it. And many still do. The famous three words, it's God's will. Or the one I really loathe, heaven needed a few more angels. Should we be surprised, though, when we hear such nonsense, perhaps such drivel underscores a purpose-driven God we have otherwise made him out to be? How easy it is, it, it is for us purpose-driven DMV Presbyterian types to try and root out the purpose in all things. And then we get over to the purpose of God in all things. To make things somehow come out with a happy ending. When all along God has created a happy beginning. A beginning that never ends. The God who finds very goodness in us, each of us, suffering. And when we know that very goodness for ourselves, perhaps we need not suffer, and the earth need not suffer so much anymore. Perhaps our purpose will just be given. That's the God I want to acknowledge. That's the Christ I want to follow. That's the spirit I want all of us to claim. That's the God of our creation story, of holy intent, let's call it. 
a lot less driven, and a lot more given. And why can't that not be enough for us? Enough to give around. You know, I have no beef with the idea of a growth economy. I'm very thankful to have a 403B and a pension that are hopefully growing. Yet need I or any of us worship at the growth economy altar? Perhaps our purpose-driven production, good as that is, can serve more at the altar of God's abundant distribution. Abundant distribution made plain at God's creation. How could we not watch that video and feel that way? Production serving distribution always. That's where I worship. That's the commissioning, the embedded in the commissioning we say each Sunday at the end of our worship. That's the biblical understanding through and through, hundreds, thousands of times over, that what is good for the least of these is good for the whole. Implied at creation, made plain in God's recreation in Christ, made manifest in the community of the first spirit-led church. For when there are those kept least, how can we celebrate God's goodness in all? Love to the loveless shown that they might see their loveliness. With God's abundance, with the distribution, our production will often lead us to have different levels. How can we bring that distribution more fully God's intent in all the world is embedded in creation, given before we are driven, lest we are driven. In our purpose-driven DMV world, where some are more chosen than others, I invite each of us today to set aside being a self-driven do good. I invite each of us today to go about our lives and go about the healing of races, economies, and earth by first and always first finding joy. Joy in the goodness of God's creativity and creating all around us. And only then do good. See the good and be led by God's holy intent. That every knee may bow and every heart may sing to the God of abundance intended to be distributed among all. Thanks be to God.